This presentation is brought to you by Brilliant at Brilliant.org, where we are bridging the digital divide for the blind. The following is an interview with the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind, conducted by Brilliant.org on August 20th, 2018. My name is Chris Whitehead, and this is Taylor Runyon, and we're with Brilliant.org. We just came here to chat with Ms. Lugo and you, Kathy, uh, just for a few minutes. We just uh, wanted to find out about the technology that you're using here at the school, because basically, let me tell you my story first, or our story. Taylor was born blind, and as he grew up, he developed this special interest in technology. Mm -hmm. And what we discovered is that, as you probably know, technology is pretty expensive, and particularly for the blind, the visually impaired, because you have to have all this extra equipment and... Like screen readers. Screen readers. Especially if you want to get a paid screen reader. <laughs> right. Like and so we mm -hmm. discovered that, you know, that was an issue. And so the purpose mm -hmm. or the mission of our organization is to help uh, people. And doesn't who can't matter whether afford. They, yeah, who can't afford those things and uh, help them, you know, gain access, but also help train them and, you know, help them make use of all that technology. Okay, so that's a little bit about us. And let me just ask you a couple of questions. What kind of technology do you use here at the uh, Colorado School for the Blind, or for the Deaf and the Blind, sorry? Right. Here in the School for the Blind, we use uh, various screen readers. We have Magic, we okay. have JAWS. Okay. Um, we use Window Eyes for some of the students, depending on which one they are, which one they prefer. Um, we also have uh, Braille note takers, okay. Braille like writers, Braille like Braille note touch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for the low vision students, we have magnifiers of various okay. types, both handheld and um, the larger, what they used to call CCTVs. Right, right. Okay. And you use computers? Oh yes, definitely. And okay, yeah. And so, um, uh, do you have a special training on any of the use of that technology, or is it just sort of integrated into the curriculum? We do have special training. Uh, we actually have technology classes for yeah. the kids. I was going to say because a lot of schools, a lot of public schools, have like, you know, cooking and you know, homemaking and and, and building and tech, and they also have technology, but. Uh, I just wondered if you did too, but you do. Yes, we, we do have technology classes. We also integrate technology into the regular academic core classes. Okay, okay, excellent, excellent. And if you were to think about what the biggest challenge is for your students when they graduate in terms of technology, what would you, what would you think that would be? The affordability, yeah. certainly. Yeah. That's a really big piece, um, as you mentioned many of the assistive technologies that are available are quite expensive. Yeah, yeah, JAWS alone is almost $1,000, mm -hmm. and, and that's, you know, you can hardly buy, I mean, you can get some of the free ones. What can we do to help uh, your students? Well, I don't know exactly what it is you could do. Um, however, if we could work out some sort of partnership to get more technology into the hands of our students, that would be absolutely wonderful. Do you send anything? Do you send anything home with them, or do they have things at home? Uh, we send like some stuff units? home mm -hmm. uh, during the school year. Okay. Uh, we also have iPads that we issue to the students, or okay. laptops, depending on the student need. Okay. Um, which, for most of the students, we'll go home with them over the weekends and okay. such. Uh, some of our younger students, they don't take them out of the building. Right. Um, because even iPads are quite expensive, I'm sure you know. Oh, mm -hmm, definitely. But, and you don't give them licenses to JAWS or any of the other technology once they We leave have here. a site license for JAWS. Right, but you don't, they don't take that with them once they leave? No. So uh, many of them do at home have uh, an individual student license. Okay. We have various tutorial videos that I made about how to use the technology um, if you go to brilliant.org and click on training and then click on tutorials you should find them there they are mp3 files that can be individually downloaded or you could use a music player but I don't really recommend that because it might may or may not be accessible depending upon your setup um, 
I would be happy to individually individually tutor um, people who need more need to learn more about our particular screen reader or note taker. Um, yeah, so maybe we can do maybe we can do some collaborative work like that. Uh, that would okay. be very I nice. I could help run classes, but <laughs> keep in mind that I live far away in Maryland, <laughs> and I might, may or may not be able to do that. Well, we do some distance learning okay. as well here on our okay. campus. Super. Do you do online classes? That's distance we learning. We do some online classes, mm -hmm. uh, mostly for our high school mm -hmm. students. I would be more than happy to, t uh, to teach um, on an online class here um, if it is needed for some of your students. Well, that's lovely. Okay. Um, I will make certain that both Mrs. Lugo and our technology teacher are aware of that as okay. a resource. Mm -hmm. And do you mind if I give you a couple of those and you can give those to people? And Kathy, I want to thank you so much for meeting thank with us. Thank you for us. stopping by. And uh, we appreciate your time and thank you. This has been a presentation by Brilliant at Brilliant.org, where we are bridging the digital divide for the blind. If you like this video, please click the like button. And for more interesting videos, please subscribe to our channel.